Ma- yeah. You're actually learning to taste things. Holy guacamole. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel. My name's Matt and I'm a bit of a whiskey nerd. My name is Rose and I'm a whiskey new. So today we're going to look at whether or not expensive whiskeys are automatically better than cheaper whiskeys. All right, let's see what, what's going to happen. <laughs> okay, so we've got in front of us three whiskeys that come in around 40 to 50 euro, one whiskey that comes in at about 100 euro, and one that comes in at about 200 euro. So we're going to see if this is about four times better than these whiskeys. Jesus, I feel like, am I am I gonna have to figure out? Yes. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> so the way I think about whiskey, generally you're paying for three things. You're paying for the quality, you're paying for the rarity, and you're paying for the age of the whiskey. Make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. I'm just wondering why someone would choose, like if you're doing your first whiskey bottle, would you choose to make it rare from the get-go or? No, I generally suggest people to get to know kind of the cheaper end of the whiskeys before they move up to the higher end whiskeys because Teeling Standard Blend, right? It's a very nice whiskey, comes in at about 35 euro, right? Yeah. But they have a 37 year old single malt. I think there's only 125 bottles of it ever made and it's 7,000 euro. That's so expensive. Right? Who has that for a whiskey? And, and is that whiskey going to be 200 times as good as their standard blend? Probably not. It would have to literally blow your mind. You would pay so much, like you'd have to buy more than one of a rare whiskey because what if you bought it and then you never actually tried it and then you just have this rare whiskey sitting there but you have no idea if it's nice or not. Exactly. And that brings us to the point of today's video because I've got three whiskeys here. They're all single malts. They come in at about 40 to 50 euro. I've got one here that's 100 euro and I've got one that's 200 euro. So we're gonna see in a blind tasting if they stack up against each other. We've got Dubliners, 10 year old single malt. This has been aged exclusively in bourbon barrels. This is Teeling's single malt. This is a non-aged statement, but it was aged in bourbon barrels and wine casks. You have had that before and you liked it. Okay. We got Dingles, it's another non-age statement, but it's probably about five to seven years old in the blend. And it was mixed in bourbon barrels and Pedro Jimenez sherry casks. That's gonna be very nice. We've also got two whiskies from Ahru. These are single cask whiskies. We got one, it's a six year old that was aged entirely in Oloroso sherry casks. There's only 292 bottles, I think of it, ever made. This Fancy. is 100 euro. And we've got another one that's 16 years old and it was aged in Tokaji wine casks. Now, forgive my pronunciation, I've heard that pronounced as Tokaji, Toke, Tokai, Takai. We're if, trying here. If you don't know how to pronounce it, put it in the comments below, <laughs> but it's spelled Tokaji, so I'm gonna say Tokaji. There's only 250 bottles of that, and it's 200 euro a bottle. Okay? God. <laughs> Let's go. Okay, so we're gonna start you off with this whiskey. Now, these aren't hints, about what whiskey is in each glass, it's okay. just for the audience. And I'm just trying to find the most expensive one, I rank them. You don't need to rank them, just okay. what you think is the most expensive, and maybe pick out your favorite one. Oh, I can do that. You don't need to do a full ranking. Oh, this one smells nice. There's a bit of an alcoholy um, after smell. Let's see. Hmm. I'll put uh, in the bottom of the picture, Ooh. so the audience knows what you're drinking. All right, so. This is, it's got a tingle aftertaste, it's got the ever so slight hint of alcohol, but not too much, enough that for the first time I would say, I enjoy that little alcoholy aftertaste. It tastes sweet, like maybe caramel, slight hints of toffee. I'm pretty sure all of them taste like some sort of vanilla, as I have learned. Um, this was really tasty and lovely, and I feel like with that smirk, it's like the cheapest one or something like that. Out of one out of one, most expensive, most liked. Okay, let's go in, I think, for your second whiskey. Okay. All right, it's got darker color, but that doesn't necessarily mean anything. Correct. It, it just has such an alcoholic smell to it. Well, two of these whiskeys are cask strength. Oh, Jesus. So it might be one of those whiskeys. Okay. So it's going to have more... I don't know which ones are cask strength or not. Well, then that's good. Oh. So think if you can get past the alcohol on the nose. It is sweet. You can tell 
like it's very strong and I feel like cast strength ones always are almost so strong sometimes it's hard to get the flavor through but it does taste sweetness to it mm -hmm. like what kind of sweetness like a syrup or something like that okay yeah I could see that but I'd still say the first one is tastier so far let's go in for the third one okay like color color doesn't mean anything Hmm. I don't know if my nose broken. You don't really have the best nose yet. Like you still have to smell, I think, a bunch more whiskeys to get yeah, used to. Yeah, yeah. Alright. Um it's dry. Dry, okay. Very, very dry, subtle. I wonder if it's dry. I'm gonna almost guess everyone that's dry it might be the tealing one because I know that's in wine cast and I know it's red red wine. Try, try to just not don't think of what yes, you had before. <laughs> try to just think of them as their own whiskeys. Okay. It's kind of dry. It's dry. I I just I don't really taste a lot of the flavors. I think I like sweet whiskeys and it's easier for me to parcel out the sweet notes in it. It okay. doesn't taste spicy, I know that, because I don't taste yeah. any like the cloves or nutmeg or pie, spices. I just don't taste much of anything. Okay, that's all right. We'll pop this down. Okay. You get some water. Okay. And we'll go on for the third one. Okay. Now, on to number four. <sighs> okay, number four. All right. Okay, sweeter. Almost, hold on. I, I almost want to say coffee-like. Coffee? But like a sweet coffee. <laughs> oh no, I could get that. Yeah, like with, with like a syrup in yeah, it. Yeah, coffee with a syrup. Okay, yeah. Again, it might be a cask strength whiskey, so try and see past the burn. <gasps> oh, this tastes like a cask strength. If it was guest cask strength whiskey day, I could do it. All right, see, pass the burn, pass the burn. Hmm, it tastes nutty. Okay. Nuts. Nuts. Not peanuts, Not peanuts. but like a fancier, bigger nut, like a walnut. Okay, any kind of sweetness? Like, Not really Because like you said this. on the nose you had that yeah. syrupy. I on the nose I had a sweetness, like a sweet coffee, like a syrup was put into a coffee. On the taste it's a little nutty. Maybe it's a hazelnut latte. Ah, I could see that. Right? I could see that, yeah. I'm better at naming whiskeys by memories. Like the memories they create rather than the actual taste. Okay. I'm sticking with that. Okay. So before we go into the last whiskey, of these four, do you think you've had the most expensive whiskey? So, I know you said they are like the three factors for figuring out whiskeys and the pricing and all of that stuff. I'm secretly wondering if the most expensive whiskey isn't actually going to taste the best. Because you know how fancy things sometimes taste actually like not that great. Yeah. And sometimes it's more of like the mid-range ones that are actually really tasty. So, so far this first one is my tastiest. Okay. But I think because I like it, it's not the most expensive one. So I think there's some sort of mind game happening here. I'm trying to outthink you. Okay, well that, that's, that's a good thing, way to be thinking because yes. generally speaking, like the ones that are cheaper are more kind of mass appeal to them. Mm -hmm. Whereas the more expensive one, for example, this one here, they spent 16 years in a single type of wine cask. The wine only comes from one part of the world, I think it's from Hungary. Mm -hmm. So that's like an experiment. So. When they put it into the cask, they had no real idea if 16 years later it was going to be a good whiskey. Yeah. It was like an experiment. So you might be onto something there, but it is also quite a rare whiskey. So that's yeah. where some of the price comes from. Yeah, and I totally get that. But I'm going to try to logic my way through this. Okay. Well, and then, not taste. <laughs> let's go in for the last whiskey. Okay. And then. Let's do this. Let's do this. Oh, this smells nice. Okay. It's so sweet smelling. Okay. Oh my gosh, this is lovely. This might be a runner for number one. Okay. Hmm. Because like, we're going to have you pick out what's your favorite and what you think is the most expensive. Mm -hmm. Because as a newbie, you might not pick out the most expensive with yeah. those complex notes as your favorite. Yeah, who knows? I can barely name any notes. I know about, oh, I think after that last one we did, I know 
a couple more notes. I think I'm into more than one hand's worth of notes. Oh, but right. hey. Hmm. Mm hmm. It is sweet. Sweet. The, the, the nose is sweeter than the taste. It's smoother than. It's pretty smooth. It's a little bit of an alcoholic burn, but. I like it. Do you think it was a cask strength? No, no. not cask strength, not cask strength. Okay. I think I've gone through, I think, what was it? Was it two, one, two of these three were cask strength? Yes. Yes. Ha. Cask strength really gets you, I feel like. So this is definitely not cask strength. It's quite nice, but it's not my favorite. Okay. It might be like my second favorite, to be okay. honest. Okay. So you have your favorite. Favorite. Okay. Wait, cool. should I try them again? Let me try them against each other. Have a quick little sip through. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, oh, okay. I'm gonna switch these around. This has more complex notes. Okay. More complex notes. I don't know what they are, but it tastes more complex in a nice way. Okay, that's good. These are clearly my favorites, All right. which makes me think they are not the most expensive ones and that they are probably the mid-range ones. And neither of them are cash strength, and that's what I'm sticking to. Okay. Okay. Now, see if you can find the expensive one. The most expensive one. This one smells so nice. Do you think it could compete with the top ones? Oh god, no. Not on taste. No? On smell, strong? yes. If you just smelled whiskey and that's what you did, yes. But on taste, no. I'm thinking... This one is the most expensive. Okay, why is that? It smells great. Mm -hmm. So I think bare minimum, an expensive whiskey, like whatever it looks like, um, smells like, like the initial bits, yeah. have to be nice. The important part, as you have said in previous videos, though, is how it tastes. I don't think a fancy whiskey necessarily needs to taste nice. At least for a whiskey noob, this is purely my own opinion. Um, I feel like it could be complex to an extent that I just don't understand it, yeah. and that's fine. Alright, tell me how I did. Okay, this is actually kind of interesting. Because you actually identified the most expensive one correctly. Yes! This is Ahru, it's 16 year old in Tokaji cask, or Toke, or however it's pronounced. You said it smelled really nice, and it does. The taste of it you weren't that fond of because it's cask strength. So <gasps> this is 56% um, oh, alcohol. So it's significantly stronger than the other. So maybe that's why on the taste yeah. it was coming in too much. So this one was the one you also thought was expensive. This is the 100 euro one. Oh my god. So you did think it was expensive, but it wasn't your favorite. Correct. Yeah, now you actually chose, I think, this one. This is Teelings, and this is Dingle. Yeah, <gasps> you chose these two as your favorite. Really? Now, as I said, like these are now this is forty six percent, I think forty six percent as well. I think yeah, forty six point three percent. So they're much more approachable in terms of like the alcohol burn, and they are pretty complex. Like this is Pedro Jimenez sherry and bourbon. This is bourbon and a bunch of different wine casks. This one you said it didn't taste of that much. That's because it spent its entire life in bourbon casks. Okay. So there's only one note. Whereas you were tasting other ones that's all a roast sherry, or we got different wines, we got special wines here. This one, I think it just didn't stand out against the others because it's just that one note. Oh, uh, Yeah. You're actually learning to taste things. Holy guacamole. <laughs> <laughs> That's wild! Yeah. So like all the other ones, so especially that one, I wonder if like I had that one by itself or with other similar ones who would taste more, you know, mm -hmm. more flavors in it. But it's interesting because all the other ones were more complex, but I was like, oh, compared. So it'll just, just compare yeah, to it, what you... Exactly. So doing a tasting like this where you can compare different whiskeys against each other is a really good way of training your brain how to pick out things. Yeah. Because you said this was not much going on, yeah. but because you were tasting against a lot of other strong flavors, like that's why it just didn't have a lot against it. My God. Yeah. So yeah, you chose the kind of more entry level whiskies as your favorite whiskies, and importantly, you were able to identify the most expensive one, even as a whiskey noob. 
Hells yeah, I was. Yeah. Hey, any final thoughts? Okay, so my final thoughts are: I think Rose's final thoughts. <laughs> final thoughts. Um, I think I can taste and appreciate the complex whiskeys, even though I can't really pick out what specific notes they are. I can at least like tell a difference between them. It's not yeah. just all whiskey. Like I can tell a difference between these four versus this one. I was able to logic my way through to the most expensive one and trying to figure out like which ones are the cash strength ones. Yeah. So like even though I'm not like, oh, it's necessarily all of these like 10 different aromas and tastes, like I can pick them out and that makes me feel super like good about myself that I'm yeah. actually learning something. I'm taking something away from what you've been taking your time to do. <laughs>